Joey, the story of Joe Biden by Jill Biden, illustrated by Amy June Bates. Give me the ball. At eight years old, Joey Biden was always ready for the ball. It didn't matter if he was the smallest boy on the team. Baseball, football, basketball, whatever. No one was more competitive. One day, he ran into a group of older boys playing football in an alley. Can't catch me, he taunted. He was right, they couldn't. So they welcomed him into their game. Everything was a contest to Joey and his three brothers, Charlie, Larry, and Tommy. It could be as ordinary as walking down the streets of Scranton, Pennsylvania, which boy could walk the fastest. But Joey was also a peacemaker who noticed what he and other kids had in common. He often found himself the leader in a club or when playing fort. Even at age eight, he looked out for others. When his friend's father left for a week-long fishing trip, Joey went to visit his friend's mom. He promised to take care of her while her husband was away. After getting his own mother's permission, he stayed the whole week, making sure doors and windows were locked at night. He and his buddies romped through the neighborhood with Joey's faithful dogs, a beagle, Snoopy, and a German shepherd, King. They pooled their pennies and dropped in at the candy store where the owner kept a pet monkey. They headed to the theater for the double feature, a Western maybe or a Tarzan movie. On the way home, they reenacted thrilling scenes, hopping from rooftop to rooftop of the garages. Or they pretended the ground was a seething swamp. Touch it and you die, eaten by alligators, they screamed. Joey wouldn't dream of missing a water balloon fight or a snowball battle. Always eager to prove he had guts, he never refused a dare, even when it was dangerous. He climbed atop a mountain of still-burning coal, for example, He raced along the pipes high above a river. Once he grabbed a heavy rope and swung over a construction site imitating Tarzan without a net. All the neighborhood kids competed to see who could climb the flagpole in the football field. The feat was impossible. The slippery pole swayed in the wind. Only one kid made it to the top, and that was Joey Biden. His friends were always welcome at the Biden house. All the kids loved Joey's mom. Mrs. Biden gave them confidence. To Joey, she would say, bravery resides in every heart and yours is fierce and clear. His father worked several jobs to keep the family going. He too always encouraged Joey. Everyone stumbles, he said, but the most important thing is that whatever happens, get up, get up. Family fortunes were up and down. To find work, Mr. Biden moved the family from Scranton and eventually to Delaware. Moving could be difficult, but Joey was lucky to have his brothers, Jim and Frank, and his sister, Valerie, who was also his best friend. Joey and Val were so close that they could finish each other's sentences. As soon as she was old enough, he'd say to Val, Okay, hop on. He'd scoop her up on his bike handlebars and take her to any playground she wanted. He taught her all his best sports moves, urging her to keep up with him and his buddies. As the oldest, Joey took the lead with his siblings. He, Val, and their two younger brothers made a deal with their parents. The kids could settle their own arguments among themselves, closing the door until they resolved them. The whole family had a rule. If you said, I give you my word as a Biden, it meant you were telling the absolute truth. Often after dinner, Joey biked down to the drugstore to get everyone a half gallon of vanilla ice cream to eat while watching Lassie and their other favorite shows on TV. Home was a place for family and learning. His uncle sat Joey down with the newspaper editorial pages and discussed the latest news. Sunday was always family church day. After mass, the grown-ups sat around the kitchen table to talk politics and sports, and Joey did also. But school was where the bullies were. Joey's mind was always sharp and fast, but talking was sometimes really difficult. He stuttered. The words just would not come out smoothly. 
Joey, it's because you're so bright, his mother would tell him. You can't get the thoughts out quickly enough. Kids made fun of him with cruel nicknames. They assumed he wasn't smart. Joey felt incredibly frustrated, but he remembered his father's words, get up, get up. Instead of showing how hurt he felt, he fought with the boys who teased him. And he also defended others from bullies, keeping an eye out for kids who were being made fun of. He took heart from his mother's words. Remember, Joey, you're a Biden. Nobody is better than you. You're not better than anyone else, but nobody is any better than you. Joey started thinking of ways to help himself talk more smoothly. Reading out loud in class was his biggest fear. When he knew his turn was coming, he took care to count the desks in advance and figure out which passage he'd be called upon to recite. Then he would memorize it, practicing when to pause, pretending that he was reading out loud. He noticed that planning ahead helped. As a paper boy delivering the newspapers, he knew which neighbors along his route were fans of the Yankees. Before he went to collect payment, he would check the sports pages so he could say something about the latest game. He even tried the famous marble trick he'd read about from ancient Greek philosophers. One day, he took ten pebbles from a neighbor's garden, put them in his mouth, and practiced speaking, hoping to strengthen his muscles. He had to stop when he realized he was more likely to swallow the pebbles than anything. Joey went to Catholic schools where nuns were the teachers. They taught math and history, of course, but also values like playing fair, helping others, and being honest. Nuns even played baseball with him. They did everything to encourage him. They stood up for him when he was bullied, and they offered ideas to help with his speech. One nun suggested putting a sing-song rhythm to his words. So in his bedroom, Joey began memorizing long passages of Irish poems. While holding a flashlight under his chin in front of the mirror, he recited poetry out loud, studying the movements of his face, trying to stop his muscles from tensing up. Hours of practice seemed to help. After his father got a better job and the family moved to Claymont, Delaware, Joey looked ahead, or actually across the street. His deepest wish was to attend the Catholic high school overlooking the Delaware River. This was a stately marble building he could see from afar, the sunlight dancing off its 200 windows. But his family couldn't afford the tuition, so he turned his dream into reality by applying for a work-study program. He spent summers painting the school's iron fences and pulling weeds in the formal gardens, and he washed those windows, all 200 of them, with vinegar and water, drying them with newspapers. While in high school, he grew a whole foot taller, no longer Joey, but Joe. A football and basketball star, he didn't have to say, give me the ball anymore. He even earned a new nickname, Hands, for his wizardly ability to catch the ball. In his senior year, he led his football team to an undefeated season, even dramatically scoring the last touchdown himself. He was a leader off the field as well, elected class president during his junior and senior years. The football team always went to the local diner for hamburgers after games. When the owner refused to let his African-American teammate order with the rest of the athletes, Joe led the whole team to leave in protest. At his high school graduation, he gave the welcome to his parents and friends without a hitch. If you put your mind to something, there's nothing you can't do, he said, having overcome his stuttering. Not only did he lose his fear of public speaking, he also discovered that he liked it. He wanted to communicate, and he looked for opportunities to do more. Give me the ball. He was inspired by the leaders of the day who were changing the country. At his presidential inauguration, John F. Kennedy had said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Joe's dream of his own future took the shape of a life in public service. He looked up biographies of those elected to the United States Congress, those who made laws and served the people. He didn't know any other Biden who had gone to college, but it would clearly be his next step. He went on to the University of Delaware, where he was promptly elected president of his freshman class. He spent one summer as the only white lifeguard at a pool in an all-black neighborhood. This was the time of segregation and the struggle for civil rights. While playing basketball with other lifeguards, Joe learned firsthand about the struggles of black America. After graduating from law school, Joe had things to say. 
Maybe he was just a regular guy, not rich, not privileged, but he dreamed big and saw himself as a leader, the best Biden I can be. Give me the ball, only now instead of sports, it was politics. In 1972, he launched an unlikely quest to become a senator from Delaware and serve in Congress. He was only 29. You couldn't even become a senator until you were 30. Valerie managed his campaign and his whole family helped while he threw himself into speaking with strength about making people's lives better. Give me the ball, not a real ball, but a job in politics, and voters did. Against all the odds, Joe became one of the youngest people ever elected to the United States Senate. As a senator, he was one of, he was one of 100 people who handled serious responsibilities, like voting on what laws the United States should have. He was powerful and respected, always voted most liked. He was reelected five times. Every day he commuted by train from Washington back and forth to his family in Delaware. The absolute most important thing is your family, he always told those who worked for him. After more than three decades serving his country in the Senate, he was chosen by Barack Obama to run as his vice president. They won, energizing the nation. Now Joe was speaking more than just about anyone representing White House policies around the country and in 50 countries around the world. He served eight years with distinction, leading President Obama to call him the, vice pre the best vice president America's ever had. After huddling with his family, he announced in 2019 that he was running for president of the United States. With his decades of experience, he called the next election a battle for the soul of America, and Joe Biden was ready to fight it. Give me the ball. <laughs>